Here's an even easier way to use the Smithers script to update your Mr. Burns RetroPie vertical image to use Emulation Station and Favorites. I'm going to be using the updated version of the Smithers script, version 1.4, and I'm starting with a fresh, brand new uh, flashed SD card of the Mr. Burns image. I was using Bellina Etcher to flash that to my SD card. And now what I'm going to do is just remove and reinsert that card to cause the boot partition to show up in my Mac. So now you see down here, there's a new location called boot. If I select that, this is the boot partition on the SD card. Now I can just take this smither zip file that I've already downloaded and drag it onto that boot partition. And it shouldn't take too long because it's only two megs. And once, it here, once it's here, you can go ahead and just double click on it and go ahead and extract it now. And then all those files will be already extracted, ready to go. Now we can just switch over to the Raspberry Pi and use a keyboard for all the remaining steps. Just hit the eject button here on the SD card to unmount it and we'll move over. Okay, I just put the SD card in my Raspberry Pi and booted it up for the first time with the Mr. Burns image. You'll notice that the screen is upside down. If you have a regular um, vertical screen Raspberry Pi, it'll look like this on your system the first time you use Mr. Burns. Some people like to flip the monitor around rather than mess with the software, but you actually don't need to do that if you're using the Smithers script. Just leave it upside down like that. Now we just have to map the controls. And then after you ran out of buttons, you just Press and hold on all these extra ones to get past them. We're not going to need them. And then hit your hotkey, which is your select button usually. Hit OK. Wait for it to finish doing what it's doing. All right, so now it looks sideways in emulation station, and that's pretty normal. Um, now we need to exit out of emulation station and go to the command prompt and use the keyboard. So hit the button you configured for start to bring up the main menu, scroll down to quit and just quit emulation station. Now from the command line, we're gonna use a keyboard. So if you don't have a keyboard plugged in yet, plug one into one of the spare USB ports on your Raspberry Pi. Now you're, the screen's still sideways, so you you're going to have to tilt your head sideways a little bit as you're doing things if you want to see it well. But we're just going to type cd slash boot. And because I extracted that into the smithers directory, I'm going to cd into smithers. And once you just start typing it, hit tab, it'll finish it for you. Hit ls, it'll list the files in that directory. Should look like this. Now the next step is we just need to make that script executable as a super user. So we have to use the command sudo to work as a super user because the boot partition, you have to be a super user to do things on it. So we're going to sudo 
chmod to change mod plus x to add executable to the script that's called smithers.sh. Now just type sudo slash dot smithers. Again, you can just start typing it, hit tab, it'll finish it for you. This is all you have to do. Hit enter. You'll see some messages up on the screen. Don't worry about if it says it can't find something. It's just, this one here is just about uh, upgrading from version 1.3 to 1.4. There's a file we don't need anymore. So it's gonna complain about that. It's just uh, renaming files, moving things around, and then it's gonna reboot when it's done. And it's gonna take a few minutes. Might run faster for you if you're using a faster SD card. I'm using a pretty cheap old Samsung card that was 16 gigs, uh, so it's not as fast as some of the newer ones might be. So it's already rebooted. You see the new splash video, it's not using the upside down one anymore, and the text is now no longer sideways. loading emulation station and we're done that's it don't need the keyboard anymore you can put it off to the side and uh, favorites are already pre-populated with some suggestions you don't necessarily have to stick with those if you don't want to when you're in your favorites if you see something you don't want, just hit the bu button that you configured to Y. It'll remove it from the favorites. You wanna add something to the favorites? Just go to Arcade, select a game you wanna add and you can add it to favorites with that same button. You can hit the select button here as well to help you jump to a letter. So let's say you wanted to see Ms. Pac-Man with the speed up hack, you could go to M and then scroll down. And then you can press Y and you'll see added to the favorites. It's now in favorites. So now if you go back to favorites, you'll see Didn't show the speed up pack name there, but it is the speed up pack version. You can see there's two different marquees showing. And you can hit A to launch it. And it's vertical using the entire screen. And this is much faster than normal Ms. Pac-Man. This is using the Final Bird Alpha emulator rather than MAME. So this helps show that the fix works for both MAME and other emulators. Kind of hard to do while holding a phone to record. And to exit, hit your start and select at the same time, back out. The favorites save when you exit emulation station. So if you modified the favorites, hit start to pull up the, or uh, yeah, player one start, select, shows the main menu, go to quit. 
and just say restart emulation station. That's going to save your favorites. And then if your machine were to get unplugged, it would still have those favorites saved. And that's all there is to it. You want the regular Ms. Pac-Man, select the other room. And it's gonna be good to go there as well. The steps I did with the keyboard, you could do with a SSH shell on a PC. If you didn't want to connect the keyboard, you just have to make sure to enable Wi-Fi and configure SSH make note of your IP address and connect to it that way. And then you can copy your, you can either just execute the commands if you copied it already to your boot partition, or you can copy it over with SSH and run it that way. So there you go. It's uh, pretty simple. Just a matter of dragging one file into the boot partition and running two commands.